What is up guys, it's RJ here, and this is the Palm phone. You may have heard of this phone back in 2018, and back then it turned a lot of heads of many consumers, myself included. This was primarily because of its insanely small size and Palm's minimalistic approach to how a smartphone should be used. You see, I can't review this phone like how I reviewed many phones in the past. The Palm phone isn't meant to break any Geekbench records or claim the title of the best camera on a smartphone. In fact, this phone was made with the intention to get you off your phone and to really enjoy life around you. And I believe with the Palm phone, the company did a good job of trying to deliver their message. But can this minimal phone be your daily driver? Let's talk. For the past five days, believe it or not, the Palm phone has been my daily driver. And it's been a rather polarizing experience to say the least. When this phone initially launched, Palm wanted this to be an extension of your smartphone and not necessarily replace your smartphone altogether. So say on the weekends when you want to decompress and just get away from technology, all you got to do is pop your SIM into this tiny thing and carry on with your weekend. But quite recently, Palm started selling unlocked versions of this device and that's how I was able to pick one up and use it over here in Canada. Currently, you can pick up an unlocked version over on Amazon for around $200. I will leave an affiliate link down in the description below. So if you want to experience the early 90s again, the Palm phone is the way to go. But make sure you watch this full review before pulling the trigger because there are a few caveats that you need to be aware of. If you want to see more smartphone content, including my Pixel 5 review, which should be arriving in a few weeks, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel because that would be much appreciated. So I really enjoy using smaller smartphones. My favorite form factor ever has to be the 5.5 inch iPhone SE. Yes, I agree, having a bigger display is great, but I value convenience and before the pandemic, I was a person who was always mobile and on the go. A smaller form factor was always something that I valued, so when Palm sent me over this phone for review purposes, I was excited. And keep in mind, I was coming to this phone from the Galaxy Z Fold 2. So we are going from 7.6 inches to a 3.3 inch panel. What really caught me off guard was just the premium quality build of this device. We do have a glass back finish with aluminum enclosures and to me it really looks like the iPhone 3GS. This display is only a 720p panel, but quite honestly it looks pretty good due to it being presented on a smaller 3.3 inch form factor. We do have rather big bezels on either side, and in the next iteration I would like to see the bezels reduced and at least be given an 80% screen to body ratio. Just to give you guys a quick size perspective, this is the size of two AirPods on top of one another and about half the size of an iPhone X. So it is quite small, hence why it's called the Palm Phone. Now, the Palm Phone does run Android 8. It is a full version of Android and you are able to download full versions of Android apps. Keep in mind though, it only comes with 32 gigabytes of storage. So the apps that you do download, make sure it's the ones that you absolutely need. I've only downloaded a few apps like Twitter, Instagram, and WhatsApp just to keep things quite minimal and to really experience the phone like how Palm intended. I do use Gboard across all my Android devices and while this keyboard may be small, I find myself making less mistakes and being able to type faster. Not to mention just typing on a smaller, lighter phone was such a refreshing experience. So you may be asking yourself, how do you use the Palm phone? Well, on the body, we have a single button that serves two different purposes. Press the button once to get to the lock screen and swipe up to unlock the device. Double tapping the power button activates Google Assistant. Voice activation is primarily how you want to interact with the Palm phone. I find it to be far faster than actually going into the phone to get anything done. On the surface, Palm is using their own unique launcher. But since this is Android, you can use any launcher you want. For myself personally, I found this launcher to be the best in terms of optimization, and it is a quite unique way to interact with your apps. There is a solitary button here on the bottom for added convenience. Single tapping it serves as a back button, double tapping it takes us to the home screen, and long pressing it takes you to all the current apps running in the background. 
What's really unique is you can even interact with the phone straight from your lock screen. Swipe up to bring a list of available apps and you can even draw letters on the screen for quick access to apps. I did find adjusting the volume levels on this phone to be rather annoying. Since there is no physical volume markers, you do have to swipe down on notifications and adjust the volume levels from there. You may have also noticed this palm tree icon right here, and this is called Life Mode. It basically acts as a battery saver and a do not disturb button at the same time. With Life Mode turned on, you won't be able to receive any phone calls or text when the palm's phone screen is turned off. In fact, the phone does disable radio signals, so calls won't even be able to come through. Quite honestly, this mode is great. I used it almost every day when I was daily driving this, and I didn't have the urge to check notifications. If I wanted to be really productive, I would turn on life mode 3 hours at a time and really be able to concentrate and get work done. Spec wise, we only have a Snapdragon 435 processor and 3GB of RAM. So how does it perform? I would say it's an alright performer if you need to send a quick text, watch a quick video, check a few socials, and make a couple of phone calls, you won't experience any hiccups. But if you are trying to game on this, it is not a fun experience. Okay, so the big question is how is the battery life since this is such a small phone? Well, battery life on the Palm phone is subpar to say the least. We only have an 800 mAh battery and if I'm using this phone for more than 3 hours, I'll quickly run it to the ground to about 10%. So when I was daily driving this thing, I had to charge it at least 4 times a day. The good news is this forced me to not use my phone as much and I guess Palm really got their message across about tech minimalism. Since the Palm phone does have such a small battery, it charges to 100% relatively quickly via USB-C. Camera wise, we have a 12 megapixel camera on the rear and it's decent in outdoor sunny conditions. These pictures have some relatively good dynamic range and they are fairly sharp. If you are trying to use this camera indoors to snap a few shots, you will encounter a lot of grain in your images. So these pictures aren't very Instagrammable if you will. We also have an 8 megapixel selfie shooter and once again it is decent in well lit conditions but in low light this camera just won't cut it. So after 5 days with the Palm phone as my daily driver, am I going to stick with it for the long haul? Probably not. And that's not because I don't enjoy this form factor. In fact, I really like the minimalistic angle that Palm is going for. I found myself to be a lot more productive in these past 5 days. I wasn't spending hours scrolling through social media and I only used my phone for the essentials. But with all of that being said, this phone definitely needs a bigger battery, a bigger bezel -less screen, and it definitely needs to run Android 10 with some better specs. If we get that on the next iteration of the Palm Phone 2, I can definitely see myself using this as a daily driver, or at least in the weeks where I am trying to be ultra productive. With the Palm Phone, you definitely get to experience tech minimalism, which is what the company was trying to achieve in the first place. So I think Palm did a rather decent job of delivering on that. But if you guys want a phone that delivers the best dock Android experience, for only $350, check out my Pixel 4a review. With all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. And don't forget to flex with your minimalistic tech.